Eric Drobel here. I wanted to really quickly go over some metahuman improvements for animators. When you bring in the metahuman from Quixel Bridge, I mean, she comes in naked and without a lot of things you need to animate. For the body rig here, I definitely recommend M Gear. It comes with templates that, so you can put a rig on in, in just a few minutes, if not seconds. One of the more obvious ones is parenting these eye lasers to the eyes. And that just helps you track things when you're animating. For the joints, for the joints, I hid as many of the leaf bones as I could. It's helpful to see the skeleton when you're animating, but when there's too many extra bones on top, it becomes less useful. I call these IK helper boxes. They help you see the kind of alignment that you should have between the knee and the foot. I have another video on YouTube that goes over that. For bringing in the clothes, you can just enter your clothes skeletons that are attached to your metahuman blueprint and export those as FBA. The X's. To get them skinned, there's a process that I won't go over, a uh, link in the YouTube description to automatically transfer the weights to your clothes. I created custom shoes, but I was able to use a technique in Blender after I created the fur to create some proxy fur. Link in the YouTube description for a video that goes over that process. You'll notice here I have uh, an approximation of my capsule component, uh, which is parented to my root. To get it to show up wireframe like this all the time, I first made a cylinder with rounded caps, parented that to the root control, and then assigned a transparent shader to it. After that, when you click off of it, the lines go away, but if you hit two, it enters a sort of smoothing mode where the lines stay on. Now, if you reference that, you don't run the risk of clicking on it again. For the width of the capsule component, you can look at what it is in your Unreal capsule component settings. For me, it matched with 40 on my scale X and Z. For scale Y, I had to eyeball it a little bit more closely by looking at the side view of my Unreal viewport. I did that for modeling proxy hair as well. I couldn't find a great process that took the hair from Unreal and, and made a shell out of that. So I, I just lined up my reference images and tried to model my own as best as I could. For the eyeballs, I took a screen capture in Unreal from the front and then tried to line that up manually in the texture for the skin. Also, when you bring in your metahuman, it comes with this interesting shader that requires you have the lights on and even then still looks a little strange. Um, so all of the skin shaders, eye shaders, I created my own and just copied over the skin color map and in some cases the roughness. I parented a shadow light to her root that's meant to help cast a shadow which gives you a sense when you're looking through the POV camera, uh, gives you a sense of self inside Maya. POV camera is just parented to her head, so as she moves around, you see approximately what it is in-game. I did some testing to see what field of view is similar to my field of view in, in the game. The field of view number in Unreal Eye that I'm using is 80, and so 21.38 seemed to be the closest match I could get. In addition to this camera parented to the head, I also have an in-between, which is looking halfway down, and then finally I have a down. And I use this down camera to get a sense of how far the hands are traveling when she's, you know, running or doing anything. There's a point somewhere around here on the camera where it, it just becomes too much. Uh, I find that keeping the arms and hands lower than this range, it's a lot less busy playing the game. I've parented a locator to her nose. Uh, well, it's following the head, but this makes tracking arcs much easier with Anambot's arc tracking tool. And then finally, I have some other cameras. I have a face cam that will follow along with her head and it will make animating her face easier in any situation. Same kind of thing for hands. You know, if the arms are flailing about, it becomes difficult to animate the fingers with any kind of polish. And this makes that easier, both left and right. Some coloring in the outliner helps see things quicker at a glance too. I noticed something unusual when I was comparing my Maya animation to my Unreal animation. Inside Maya, my pupils and irises had come in really small. And the only thing I could think of was that when I made this metahuman, I picked the size for the irises and pupils that were the largest. And so maybe Maya just gives you the base default size, which in this case was really tiny. So I went in with the UVs and just scaled them up to get something much closer to what I'm seeing in Unreal. Well, thanks for watching my video. I hope you learned something that can help you with animating metahumans in Maya. And if not, I hope you liked the fur stimulation. I know I do. Stay
Still working on that jump.